above the ground. Like Slimer from Ghostbusters. Anyway, that's I've got two. I'll think of a third one. If I do, I'll come back to you guys. Caitlin asks, what's something y'all do for fun on set? We tell a lot of stories. When we're sitting in like the jet, or especially scenes that all seven of us are in, or six of us, if Kirsten's on a video monitor, um, we tell a lot of funny stories. We, um, I don't know, we have a lot of fun. We have too much fun. We have like so much fun, I think it, it should be illegal. Next question. <laughs> Carolyn asks, what crazy family interactions have you had since joining the show? Family interactions. I don't really know what that means. So I am going to answer that question with another question. Wait, what crazy family interactions? Meaning like with my own family? Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm going to skip that one, Carolyn. I guess f crazy family interactions. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I like it. My man Vernon over here is miming something. I don't know what that is, but I like it. I love it. Yeah. Oh, at the end? The karaoke episode, maybe? That's a good one, man. I like this. I've got a mime over here. <laughs> You're like a mime. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to move on to Dinah's. Dinah? D-I-N-A? Dinah. Have you ever heard your own voice and it's so annoying? That's what I'm, that's what I'm hearing right now. All I'm hearing is my own stupid voice like, ooh, 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 ooh. If you could change one thing from your past, what would it be? I would change nothing. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm always, I'm terrified of the butterfly effect. It was, I think Ray Bradbury coined that term. You go back in time, you seemingly don't change anything. You return to the present. You find a dead butterfly on your shoe. And now, like, Ronald McDonald is the mayor of California. Or something weird has happened where, like, one tiny insignificant change has made everything in the world crazy. I wouldn't change anything. I quite like the trajectory of things. Charlotte asks, what's the most challenging thing about playing Reed? Um, not letting the darkness haunt you, I guess, would be the, the most challenging thing. Um... Sheila asks, okay, your episodes have a lot of homages to classic horror. What are some of your favorites? I love, I love classic horror. I love the horror genre. I love trying to infuse any bit of that into the, the episodes that I direct. Some of my favorite horror movies of all time would be The Shining, The Changeling, the 1978 Changeling with George C. Scott, not the, the remake that had nothing to do with The Changeling. Um, I love Something Wicked This Way Comes. It's an old Disney movie. Uh, Watcher in the Woods is another incredible Disney horror movie. Um, I love all the universal horror movies. Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, Invisible Man, Creature from the Black Lagoon. I guess you'd say I've never seen a classic horror movie I didn't love. I love The Haunting, the original Haunting. I love them all. And yeah, I try. They're, they're great influences to me. I love German Expressionism. So. Movies like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which is a 1919 film, and uh, Nosferatu, and uh, all of those silent, black and white, uh, beautifully shot films from, from Germany, I love. Um, what is the most difficult aspect of filming when you're both directing and acting in the same scene? Um, it's weird. I used to feel like I don't know. It, it, for whatever reason, it, it, nothing about about directing is is hard. I love it, and it, it's something I enjoy so much. Um, the most difficult thing is when it's over, and I've gone because it's very it's a lot of hard work directing and acting in an episode, and it's like nineteen hour days. I'm essentially living in the trailer or the editing room or or the the pre production offices. And then what's hard is when it's over, and I return just to like one full time job of acting on the show. I feel like I'm a werewolf that like the full moon has gone away and I'm now just this like this like boring dude in a suit like hey man I'm sometimes a werewolf when it's a full moon I get really crazy and I can do all this cool stuff and now the full moon's gone and I'm just like nom, 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 like saying some lines and it, it seems really easy so I guess the hardest thing is the transition the transition back to uh, non werewolf uh, human mode Stephanie asks what advice would you, could you give from personal experience 
to aspiring directors? Great question, Stephanie. Uh, my advice would be advice that I got when I was in film school, and it's if you want to make movies and you want to be a director, the quickest point, the quickest way, the quickest road between two points is a straight line. Um, make movies. And luckily with technology the way it is today, with video cameras and editing equipment and everything, we, like never before, have the power in our own hands to make anything at any point. So rather than being like, oh, I want to be a director, so I'm going to go do script coverage for this company and read stuff to get me to this point, don't just make movies. Like, ma if you want to be a director, direct. Make anything. Make short films, make commercials, make, make anything, and don't, um, I don't know, I, I wouldn't necessarily worry about, like, secret back steps into directing because it's if you just persevere and work hard and keep making stuff you'll make stuff uh jennifer asks if you weren't acting and directing what would you be doing with your life hmm i don't know i don't i don't i can't imagine a scenario where that wouldn't happen like i i would be acting and directing somehow i, I think i'm very lucky where again all i ever want to do is entertain people whether it's one person or a lot of people, which I'm fortunate to do on Criminal Minds. But if it, if it weren't in a big format, I would still be doing it, just probably for myself even, or for one person. I'd be doing exactly what I'm doing. It's just I think the size of the audience might be different. Um, if not that, I would be telling ghost stories. At, uh, I would be running a summer camp where I tell ghost stories. Like, maybe that's the question you were looking, or the answer you were looking for. T Tomta... T-A-M-T-A -T -A asks, who's your favorite writer? My favorite writer is, I have a lot. Um, I don't know, man. I love, oh, I love Edgar Allan Poe. I love Charles Bukowski. I love Mark Twain. I love Charles Dickens. I love, um, hmm. I love a lot. Um, I don't know, if I had to pick one, Oh, I love Ray Bradbury. Dang, I love them all. I really, I love anyone that's that's had the guts to put anything out, whether it's a book, a poem, a movie, a photograph. I like anyone making anything, but those are some of my favorites. Frida asks, how's a normal day on set? How would you describe your cast members? Um, great, they're all wonderful. Um, I like, I love, they're like, it's like working with your best friends and the crew as well. I love the crew. I love, I love everyone there. So it, it makes the job really fun. And I think it's probably a part of the secret to why we've been on the air for two years, plus seven, nine. Ellen, probably, this is probably from Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres asks, you've worked with many amazing people. Who's one person you still dream of working with? I, I have been very fortunate to work with a lot of, a lot of great people. To work with anyone, I don't know. I like, I like working with everyone. So I don't really have any one person that I want to like work with. I, I, I kind of, in a weird way, I'm looking forward to working with like the next. I like working with people that are like sort of starting off in their career, and that nobody has sort of realized how wonderful they are yet. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to the next amazing talent that is yet to be undiscovered that I get to. To work with. Jesse asks, what do you have planned for your painting career? Great question, Jesse. Thanks. Um, I love to paint. I love to draw and make stuff. Um, my next, what do I plan next? I don't know. I've been working on a children's book for a really long time um, that I'm illustrating. So yeah, probably that. I'm going to keep on pushing with that. As I work on that, other things pop up and I always get sort of sidetracked, but hopefully I'll finish that in the next two years. Um, at Wednesday Night Girls asks, if you had to describe your style in one word, what would it be? My style? I, I, it can mean a lot of things. My personal style, my life style, my directing style, my acting style. I think I, could, I would describe it all, I would hope that it's sincere. That's all I've ever really tried to do, is be sincere. Um, next question, Empress Yumi, that's one heck of a name, or Empress, which, uh, 
What should we look forward to in Blood Relations? That's the episode that I directed that's airing tonight at 9 on CBS. Well, Empress Yumi, I think you can look forward to some thrills, some kills, some spills, some shrills, some duck bills, some krill oil? Is that an oil? I'm joking. It's a great episode. I'm very proud of it. I've loved, I've, I've directed seven episodes of the show. I love them all like they're children. Um, this one is probably my scariest. Um, I think there's like three moments that will hopefully terrify you and shock you. I think the ending is really something unique that we don't do on the show a lot. And it's, uh, this was a great opportunity for me to kind of make, um, a, a horror movie in a sense because it, it deals with um, a scary creature in the woods so there's some um, I don't want to give too much away but he may or may not be slightly off in a good way I don't want to give anything away it's a scary episode I'm really proud of it I hope you love it I hope you're shocked there's a lot of uh, turns and twists and tremendous acting and yeah I'm, re I'm really excited to see what you guys think of it but you know what, my hope, I know a lot of parents let their kids watch the show. My hope is that this is the one episode that kids, that parents say, you can watch 199 episodes of Criminal Minds, but this one is a little too scary. You have to wait until you're 16 to watch it. That's, that's my hope. And then I hope that kids kind of secretly go and they watch it, and they're, they're scared by it. And I hope that it makes a good impact on them and entertains them immensely. Barb asks, is there anything in particular you get, you, you do to get in the zone for directing assignments? Um, yeah, I do, or when, or when you're acting. I do, I try, I think I'm, um, I'm sort of a method actor and a method director, and whenever I'm approaching like a, a new directing project, I um, sort of, I, I find the music in my head and I listen to that exclusively almost for the whole three to four weeks that I'm filming. And I try to just approach it, I, f I try to find the viewpoint from which I wanna tell the story because I feel like great filmmaking, it's important to be very subjective with it and to put the audience into some um, active position as one of the, either the villain or the victims. And I try to early on identify that viewpoint and stick within that world and approach the storytelling from that one perspective to give it its own unique feel. Sue asks, any stories from filming this episode? No spoilers. Um, there are a lot of good stories, but they're all spoilers. We had a lot of fun. We had so much fun filming this. We were out um, on location five days, which is more than new normal, and we were living in the, the swamps and the bogs and the forests and creating uh, a really fun environment. But um, yeah, I, I don't want to spoil anything. Last question. The Zug Zwang. Wait, it's actually Zug Zwang. I think it's saying Zug Zwang, which is an, an homage to, I think, Zug Zwang, an episode from a couple years ago, asks, tell me a joke Reed would say. I like, this is a good question to end on. A joke that Reed would say would be, I've got a great knock-knock joke. Okay, you start it. Vernon, he'll be off camera, but you start, you start the joke. Not, not. Who's there? Apple. Apple who? Apple ratio. Apple ratio. I don't get it, but I like it. That, <laughs> I like that you responded. I, I like that you responded so quickly. I, I think Reed's go-to joke, though, is how many existentialists does it take to screw in a light bulb? Um, oh wait, I don't know. I forget the answer, man. That's why I'm different than Reed. It didn't, he, he had this joke. It was like season two or three. How many existentialists does it take to screw in a light? Do you know the answer to this? Neither do I. I hope some, I know some people out there do. I love you all, I really do. You are the best fans in the entire freaking universe. And I, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy tonight's episode. I hope you enjoy every episode. I hope I haven't bored you to tears. I hope no one's recorded this. I hope it burns immediately after. I said a lot of ridiculous stuff, but um, I love you all, and I hope you sleep with the lights on after watching my episode tonight. Bye.